Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer, board certified by the National Board of Trial Advocacy and the Minnesota State Bar Association as a criminal trial specialist. Uh, what does that mean? That means I go to court. And what is it? You know, I, I, we had one of the comments. Could you please explain the difference between somebody who actually goes to trial and somebody who uh, not like 92% of the other people just hold their hands or whatever they said and, and negotiate plea bargains? Well, let's just uh, call a spade a spade. I mean, the uh, most of the cases settle, okay? Uh, but I'm in trial a lot. And the reason I'm in trial is because uh, like I'll tell my uh, the prosecutor, I'll say, you know, my client doesn't go to trial without a uh, go to prison without a trial. Period. And so that's why I wind up trying a lot of cases. But if you, they know you're going to go to trial, and they know you try cases, and they know you win cases, that means you get better plea bargains uh, from the outset, and that and that has proven to be true. So today, uh, just that was just our response to one of our our amazing fans who uh you guys have been so loyal to us and so good to us over the last year and into the second year of our channel we just can't tell you how much we appreciate it but today <clears throat> this is like candy for me uh we're doing a court cam reaction to the five most disrespectful defendants i and this happens all the time i've had um you know client walk out of court and call the judge the c word whatever and uh judge looks over at me looks at the prosecutor i've been called worse so let's uh let's just get into it and i haven't seen this so we'll just uh get your my initial reaction this is the arraignment of 20 year old spencer allen boston at a traffic stop two months earlier now arraignment arraignment is where you go for your first appearance and there's two things that happen in the, at the arraignment. They uh, d they can read you the charges on the record, um, or you can waive it generally. If you can read and write English, you waive it. But then they set conditions of release. And if you're being disrespectful at, at the arraignment, guess what? That judge is going to up your bail. Boston received citations for speeding and speeding. simple possession of marijuana. Yes, sir. I think it's very unfair, the marijuana law here. Um, I think we the people deserve better because marijuana is a very harmless drug and it's been around for ages since the 80s and 90s. Okay, so you, when you go to the arraignment, it's not your opportunity to, uh, to give a speech as to what you think the law should or should not be. You remember um, in My Cousin Vinny, where he's, I think we have a misunderstanding. No, again, we have a failure of communication. How do your clients plead? They thought they were getting arrested for uh, shoplifting a can of tuna. What are you telling me? That they plead not guilty? No, I I'm just trying to explain. I don't want to hear explanation at this point in time as to have an arraignment. Are we clear on this? There seems to be a great deal of confusion here. There are only two ways to answer it, guilty or not guilty. My clients didn't do anything. Once again, the communication process is broken down. Your plea is either guilty or not guilty. If I hear anything other than guilty or not guilty, I will find you in contempt. No. Next words out of your mouth are either going to be guilty or not guilty. If I hear anything other than guilty or not guilty, you'll be in contempt. Now, how does your client, we, you know, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, I've heard that baloney all my life, so don't go any further on that. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, now you know the, ju the judge is in charge. And if you don't recognize that the judge is in fucking charge, guess what? You're going to get it. Nobody's good or bad. All I know is that the state still has it against the law. I swore to uphold the laws, and I have to uphold the laws as a judge. It probably is unfair, but I can't change it. You've got to go see the legislature. To get that change, you want to face trial date? Uh, yeah, we can do that. I'll be fine, then you, then you make another speech. As the judge works with court employees to schedule a trial date, May 7th. Boston decides to take action. As he pulls out what appears to be... Okay, that, <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. So he pulls out a joint in, in court. Now... There is a thing called contempt. 
There is criminal contempt and civil contempt. Civil contempt is where you basically have the keys to the jail. That you're ordered to, to do a condition. You don't do it like Donald Trump. He was ordered to produce these records. He won't do it, so the judge fines him $10,000 a day. That's civil contempt. This is criminal contempt. This is, uh, and you don't even get a fucking trial with this. Judge can sanction you right then and there. So let's see what happens with this. Criminal contempt is where uh, the, the contempt happens right in front of the judge. A joint. No one seems to notice until, shockingly, he lights up. And this time it's noticed immediately. Hey, hey, hey! We the people deserve better. Boston may have finally pleaded his case. Hey, hey, hey! We the people deserve better. So, that's it. you can see he's being taken into custody right then and there. But he's immediately taken away by the court officer. And Judge Barry gets the final word. Take him to jail. Yeah. Slapping Boston with a disorderly conduct charge, as well as another charge of possession. The judge also holds him in contempt of court, and Boston is forced to spend 10 days in jail. So on a list of 1 to 100, this is probably 99th in terms of severity of being disrespectful in court. This is 17-year-old Donta Wright. Wright's in court today to receive his sentence for the shooting death of high school student Jordan Klee. He's played... When you have a sentencing in a homicide, you, that a courtroom is never more tense because you, you don't know what the sentence is going to be, number one, and you know unless it's, unless it's life without, in which case... You know, there's nothing to gain or lose by being respectful or disrespectful. But, you know, if you have a homicide and you have all these victims, uh, relatives or, you know, victim impact statements come into play, the courtroom is really, really tense. See the armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery, a felony firearm violation and second degree murder. As part of the sentencing, a family member makes a victim impact statement on behalf of the victim's mother, who's too overcome with emotion to speak. So the victims get the chance to, to and they're supposed to address the court. Sometimes they address the defendant. But, and look at look in this picture how close they are to him. Um, and, and oddly enough, they're all wearing orange. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But, but you know, the victims uh, say how this has impacted them and... Uh, and it's it's a tough thing to do, and it's a tough thing to sit through as a, as a defense lawyer. Oh, that whatever it was you wanted so badly that you felt the need to murder my son was worth the next at least 52 years of your continued existence. You won't get the luxury of raising your child because you took mine away. Wright's demeanor so during this statement is... Life. So your demeanor in court is is an important thing because it's viewed by the judge, whatever. And and the jury, everybody sees your demeanor. Okay, I know a prosecutor that who turned judge, who later got admonished because she would roll her eyes at everything you know somebody did in court. Um, I got admonished because uh, one time because I thought for sure the judge was going to give us a judgment of acquittal. It was so clear to me, and the judge was kind of a prosecutorial minded judge, and he didn't. And I'm like. Just my, just my facial, Mr. Rivers. Haven't we talked about this before? Blah blah blah. Well, Not any what of you that, might expect. Honey. Your actions have led you to a prison cell. But all See, if you look at him, he's smiling. He's moving his hands like this, and that is a nightmare for a defense lawyer. And it's a nightmare because your your work is wrapped up in this, and if he's making it harder for you. Um, it, it, it's it's unsettling. You saw that I live in every day. Well, you can still hope to be released one day. I'll never <clears> escape <throat> my help. You are still alive, but Jordan has no future. Thank you, Your Honor. We're done. I just want to tell y'all, I'll be home soon. Or I'll be Keon. I love my family. That's all you got to say. You know, I have. That's called allocution, where the defendant has an opportunity to to speak. And generally, you're supposed to say, oh, you know, I have learned a lot from this experience. I'm so sorry. There's nothing I can do to, to bring back so-and-so. And if I had it to do over, blah, blah, blah. Um, you're better off saying nothing because you're not obligated to say anything. And in this guy's case, he should have said nothing. 
Um, never in 23 years, approximately, ever not accepted a sentence agreement between the parties because it's a bargain for sentence by the parties. But watching you sit there, smile and laugh and shake your head like this was no big deal, I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. Now look at the, <laughs> the defense lawyer. He's like... Mm, fuck you. I had this fucking thing all wrapped up and you had to fuck it up. God damn it. I guarantee you that's what he's thinking. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted to do. The judge does have the authority to reject the plea deal. Mr. Bella, do you want me to... And, and he, all of a sudden, and all of a sudden his balls drop when he talks to his lawyer. He looks at his lawyer and his lawyer shakes his head, you know. I mean... Accept the sentence agreement. Your Honor, before I answer the court's question, I would like an opportunity to discuss it with the victim's family. I have had a very lengthy discussion uh, with the victim's mother as well as his grandparents uh, and some family members. Uh, they understand that obviously this, this is the defendant uh, who brutally uh, murdered their son by shooting him in the back of the head. He's shown absolutely no remorse. However, the Glee family um, does want to move on with this, and they are asking, as well as the people, uh, that you proceed with the sentence Okay. The judge accepts the sentencing agreement, which puts him behind bars for 25 to 52 years. And and that's all. It, my my sense is that uh, the judge has seen more of his behavior than just that one day. Because um, otherwise, why would you would you blow it up a uh, plea agreement up for the, for just that? But and and they do a pre sentence investigation. And my guess is that even in the pre-sentence investigation, he didn't take responsibility or show remorse. And showing remorse is a big part of a plea. Communications, Warhurst. Yeah, I want to report a crime that's about to happen. What do you mean a crime that's about to happen? Yeah, there's about to be a crime that's going to happen if my kids don't come back to me, you stupid bitch. Because you're stupid. Judges don't want to bring people to courtrooms. I got a gun pointed at you building. Sir, what is going on? You call him, sir, you stupid bitch. Where's your judge warrant at? You gonna bring that bitch out in handcuffs and I'll... So now I think this is outrageous. Now this is, uh, this is disrespectful. Now I, I think this goes up there. Execute that son of a bitch right in the street. I'm letting you know I'm gonna shoot this bitch. You good? Give me my kids. Where are you at, sir? I just told you I'm outside of her building waiting for her to get there in the morning. I'm going to pop a cap in that bitch. You stupid. Detectives identify the anonymous caller and track him down. Alan McCarty is arrested and charged with making death threats against a judge whom he mistakenly believes took his children away in a child custody case. So if your kids get taken away, it it's probably because you're this guy. <laughs> Um, because you, if you, if you, it takes a lot for somebody to get their kids taken away and all of a sudden you're going to blow up your entire rest of your life and their lives and everybody else's life just because you feel like you were fucked over. Now, a year later, in front of a different judge, his trial begins. All right, raise your right hand. I'm going to swear you in. I'm not under oath. Raise your hand. That's a bad figure. I didn't appreciate that. This is being done unconstitutionally. You all took my kids unrightfully. You won't allow my witnesses here. We haven't started the trial yet. It doesn't matter. You still deny it. You want to take my kids from me and act like that? You ain't that bitch. So, again, we have some more contempt, of course, from somebody who's on the uh, different socioeconomic scale from the judge. You ain't a bitch that took my kids. You want to be in the room or not? Do you want to suck my dick? Do you want to suck my dick? Well, yeah, let me think about that. Hmm. Uh, hold on a second here. Let's see. Let's see here. Do I want to suck you? Yes, I think I would like to suck your dick. I don't think so. I'd prefer not to, sir. I'd prefer not to, sir. See, that? I love that. You know where, where you got some hostility uh, uh, up against some measured uh, composure. 
You got a mouth for it. Do you want to be here when the jury's here? What the do you think? I don't know. I need you to answer. McCartney's eventually found guilty. Here's the thing. When you're that obstreperous in court, two things can happen. The judge can exclude you from the courtroom and they can try you without you being there. Called abstentia. Or, or they can duct tape your fucking mouth shut. And I've seen that happen before following month for sentencing. You're before the court, Mr. McCarty, to uh, show cause why I should not hold you in contempt for behavior that you demonstrated during the jury trial. You threatened the uh, unborn child of the prosecutor. Um, or, a bunch of lies, you stupid piece of then also, You threatened my life. In the... Uh, you, you... Back room. Something... <laughs> You know, I I just, it has to be just, you know, a sheer personality disorder that would, that you you would, you know, you you think, like, there are, there are moments where somebody can be so pissed off that, um, you know, that you, that you cock off, right? And then you think about it and you say, God, I really shouldn't have done that. This guy doesn't appear to have any of that internals going on. McCarty's removed again. This time he's placed in a back room with a one way mirror. Count one, I'm going to adjudicate him guilty, sentence him to 15 years in Florida State Prison. As to count two, I'm going to adjudicate him guilty, sentence him to five years to run consecutive to count one. McCarty's currently serving his sentence in a Florida state prison. For 20 years. For 20 years. Cocking off like that for 20 years. You know, uh, I've had clients like that where no matter what you say to them or what you do with them, they are completely unreasonable. I've had clients, all right, we need to argue jurisdiction. We need to argue this and this and this. And it's like, well, and you know everything that they're saying is bullshit. Everything that they're saying, nothing makes sense. And it's kind of a tightrope when you have a client like that. I just had one not that long ago, and he just uh, was so unbelievably off the chain that I, I just I wound up having to withdraw it because it just made it impossible to represent somebody like that. Next up is Michael Ray, who's facing four charges, including criminal trespassing and second degree assault. A bar- now, I would love to have that guy come to my house and say, um, is your daughter available? Because I'm here to take her out. I don't think so. A bail hearing is usually a quick proceeding if the defendant is cooperative. The prosecutor suggests a bail amount for Ray based on the crime and the defendant's history. Remember, the county's requesting $25,000 full cash fine, all charges. <laughs> you think that's funny? I think it's hilarious. We weren't done. Ray might feel $25,000 is too high, but sarcasm won't get him a reduction. I, I was in court once, and um, a guy was like that with the judge. And the judge issued $1,200 bail. And he says, oh, that's bullshit. Well, how about another 1200 Sure, $2,400. You want to go for another one? Yeah. And he just they kept doing it until he got uh, up to, uh, like, whatever the maximum was at the time. And the judge lets him know. All right, so bond is $50,000, no bail credit, danger to community. Thinks these are funny charges. I was lucky I didn't hold him in contempt. Ray just had his bond doubled. But as he re-enters the hallway, he has something else to say. Uh, I'll get, bring him in. I'm putting the whole in contempt. Hope I, see you charges. On, hope I see you on the street, bitch. How, how is that going to help you? I mean, when you put your hand on a hot stove, you go like this, right? I mean, you try not to hurt yourself. These guys who do this stuff, and it it happens every day, and it's probably one of the reasons that they're in the predicament that they're in to begin with. But there's no sense of self-preservation. Oh, you have the power, Judge. I should shut the fuck up. Ray's language isn't the only thing to upset the judge. According to court officials, the defendant also gave her the middle finger. 
30 days to serve on contempt for flipping me off twice. Judge calls him back. But it looks like he's gone. If we bring him back in, he's just gonna get another 30 days for doing something else. Sure enough, Ray comes back for more. Oh, here he oh, comes. Sir, I'm holding you in contempt for what you did. What's the holding again? And so... All right, you, you can take him back. 100 days to serve. 100 days to serve? Okay. Yeah. Oh, because of two EPOs and two mission cases? That's right, the judge just gave him 100 days in jail. He's done. Ray could just walk away without making matters even worse. But... But he goes a different route. I think we need to stop. Yeah. Can we bring him back? <laughs> Why do people do this shit? I mean, it's just so dumb. It's like, I want to fuck myself over as much as I possibly can. Gotta be charged. Yes. What started out as four serious charges has grown into a grand total of ten. On the span of approximately three minutes. For, We're in the Frank for what? Murphy Hall of Justice in Detroit, Michigan. For the sentencing of 25-year-old Amanda Casal. There's a lot of things that you can do. And your life doesn't have to be over because of a poor choice. You just have to accept responsibility for it and find a way to make something positive out of a very negative situation. Casal has been found guilty of driving under the influence, causing a head-on collision that killed 31-year-old Jerome Zerker. And, and normally these are prison cases uh, when you have a crimvicular homicide. Um, and usually, depending upon the jurisdiction, it could be anywhere from like 41 months to, uh, you know, 10 years. So, somewhere in there is generally where, where, you know, it's a little up four to 10 years is generally what you're looking at. Unless you can get probation by doing some kind of um, treatment. Severely injured his fiance, 31 year old Brittany Johnson. The couple have five children together. Prior to sentencing, the court will hear a powerful impact statement from the victim's children, read by his sister, Doreen Zerker. Amen. And like I said, these victim impact statements, ugh, they're just, they're heart-wrenching to listen to. And there's nothing you can do. You can't object. You can't, you just have to sit there and, and accept it. Duh. Look what you did to my life. You ruined everything I had, like my dad's life. Amanda seems devastated by Doreen's words. But Judge Kiana Lillard apparently hears some snickering from Casal's family sitting in the gallery. You can go to whoever can sit here at a tragic moment like this and laugh and smile when somebody has lost a family member. This is a court of law. You cannot come down to the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice and act any way you want to act. That's the defendant's mother, Donna Casal. Because if you don't know how to act, you can go to jail. Again, you can get, if you're not acting in accordance with the courtroom decorum. Now, there's certain, um, judge has, doesn't have unlimited authority, but has pretty much carte blanche authority. Uh, and if they tell you to do something and you violate a court order while you're in court, um, you can be held in contempt. Ma'am, you are being taken into custody for criminal contempt. Your disruptive and disrespectful behavior disrupted today's proceedings, and you, ma'am, are going to the Wayne County Jail for 93 days for direct criminal contempt. It'll be the sentence of this court that you will serve three to 15 years in the Michigan Department of Corrections. If there's nothing further, that concludes this matter. Casal only serves three years and is then paroled in February 2020. As for Amanda's mother, Donna, she spends the night in jail and appears before Judge Lillard the next morning. Donna seems to have learned a serious lesson from just one night behind. We call that clanging door therapy, and it generally has uh, a chilling effect on somebody's attitude. Ours. Miss Parsons, is yeah. there something you'd like to say? Yes, I deeply apologize for what I did. I'm really sorry that I laughed at somebody's death. Because I don't want to go to jail. That's what she's crying about. A lot of stress. And I deeply apologize for what I did in your court. I just needed to get out and 
it's been very hard for me this year and I know for the other family and I'm so sorry about what I did and I know it was wrong and I apologize. You know, it. I, I will have to say it has to be hard for a parent to watch their child in jail. I've taken um, one of my kids out of jail on a number of occasions and it's it's not easy when you get a phone call and it's uh you know you have a call from a correctional facility and it's your child on the other end i know people watch a lot of shows on tv where you see different things happening in make-believe courtrooms that give people a skewed sense of reality but this is real life here and we just can't have people behaving like that it can't be tolerated so i will um give you Modify your sentence for direct criminal contempt from 93 days to one day with credit for time served. And you should. Do you see the chilling effect that uh, having accepted a responsibility does? That's a, that's a really good example of showing you somebody who doesn't give a flying fuck and they're about to blow up their deal and spend the rest of their life in jail, as opposed to somebody who acts out in court, gets the clanging door therapy, comes back and has some remorse, and she gets her 93 day sentence reduced down to a one day. Really God bless you. Thank you. And I apologize. For- and now she's thankful. Oh, thank you for giving me that day in jail. <laughs> I mean, just it was just, but it was out of stupidity. So we have for the other family. Donna serves one day. Thank you. And is released. You're welcome. So that's uh, five most disrespectful defendants. I don't think they're actually the most. I'm sure we could find some that are far more disrespectful, and we'll probably do that sometime soon. Some of these courtroom scenes where uh, the victim's parents, like or the dad usually, jumps over the the bar and goes after these guys is actually um, it's shocking to watch. But, I mean, we act out on emotion sometimes so much that um, – that, and then the court system is, is what winds up you know, raking those in. Don't act out of emotion. If you're a young guy and you've got some beef with somebody, sit down, have a fucking beer, measure yourself out, and then relax. You know, don't act on things right away because guess what? Um, you wind up on the uh, five most disrespectful uh, defendants in a, in a court camp. So this is Bruce Rivers. Uh, thanks for watching. Next time, uh, make, make sure that you subscribe. You follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Patreon, help us do some good work there, and spread the word. See you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts.